Minister Colette Kelleher, five minutes, please. Welcome the Minister to the Shannoth and welcome the opportunity to comment on the migrant in integration strategy. I would also like to men uh, welcome the commitment contained in the strategy to review and reform our legislation to tackle hate crimes, uh, the commitment to place long-term residency on a statutory footing and the provision of funding to community groups and NGOs to foster and promote integration. Uh, I look at this issue through the lens of my own migrant experience. Like millions of Irish people, I was an economic migrant. I graduated from UCC in the bleak 1980s when there was no jobs or opportunities. I followed my then boyfriend, now husband, to London. It was a case of family reunification and I stayed there for 17 years. Migration is a complex issue. It's neither black nor white. All pluses are all minuses. It's a balance of give and take. Reflecting on my own experience, I can see that I both contributed to and benefited from the society that I lived in. During my time in London, I worked, I paid taxes, local, the poll tax, even water charges. I was an active citizen. I volunteered in the local disability centre. I joined and played a role in a political party. My husband was school governor. We gave back to the community. But I also signed on, did a postgraduate degree in Southampton with subsidised accommodation. I availed of free healthcare through the NHS. I received child benefit and got free books for my children at the local school, a school where 31 languages were spoken. The school played a key role in making me feel like a full participant through intercultural exchange and thoughtful, thoughtful local leadership like we have displayed by Senator Hopkins here in her hometown of Balladurine. Out of that context and from that experience, I have a few questions for you, Minister, on our plans for the integration of migrant communities in Ireland. First, I have concerns that the habitual residency condition, which excludes people from supports for their first two years in Ireland, it comes up time and again in the homeless sector, and it often makes a bad situation a whole lot worse. Can you tell me or find out from me how many people are affected by the HRC, how consistently it's applied, what is the core purpose of it now, and does the purpose still stand in the light of Brexit? In a similar vein, I note that there is no mention of any actions to support the 26,000 undocumented people in Ireland, despite the fact that the government are pushing for a scheme for the undocumented Irish in, in the US. And I recognise the uh, hypocrisy of this uh, that Senator O'Reardon outlined. Second, access to education is a key driver for integration. Migrants and NGOs like NASC and Cork have long called for the expansion of the Free Fees initiative to include children of migrant parents who are currently ineligible. Many of these parents are working and contributing to the economy and their children have gone through the education system, find that they are faced with EU fees when trying to access education for their children. This is unfair and acts as a clear barrier to education. This is particularly true for children of work permit holders. Minister, can I ask you to look at that? The definition of migrant in the strategy remains very narrow. It completely excludes asylum seekers, for example, and there are no measures to address their integration needs. Like many of our EU counterparts, the integration process should begin from the point of arrival, ensuring that those who eventually remain in Ireland have come through the asylum process can make the smooth transition from institutional living and direct provision to the life in the community. A report by the Iraq this Petitions Committee, chaired by Senator McLaughlin in May 2015, found that segregationist direct provision was not fit for purpose. This finding was consistent with the working group uh, known as, uh, uh, and commissioned by Senator O'Rear, though known as the McMahon Report, published in 20, uh, June 2016. Like Senators Lawless, Conway, O'Clarethic, Black, McLaughlin and O'Rear Dawn, I'd like to know, is the application process any better since those reports? Is it still dogged with delays? How many people have leave to remain but are stuck because of lack of affordable housing? Uh, and I think with Senator McLaughlin's helpful suggestion is one that should be looked at seriously. Is direct provision now covered by the Ombudsman for Public Services? Does freedom of information now apply to all aspects, including the provision of goods and services and contracts? And given that people are living for years on end in direct provision, will those centres now be inspected by HICWA? Are there any advances on giving people the right to work or programmes to help people who have leave to remain, get employment, training or education? Are there any plans to increase the paltry allowance to enable people to live an integrated life? I'm aware of inconsistencies. Uh, an example of one direct provision centre in Cork has a bus five times a day, another just once a week. 
On another related issue, Ireland has promised to take 4,000 refugees and asylum seekers by sem September 2017. How close are we to meeting that target? I support NASC's call for a new safe and legal migration route for people fleeing conflict to have someone willing to sponsor them in Ireland. The proposed scheme would introduce a humanitarian admission programme for Irish citizens, beneficiaries of international protection or legal residents to apply for family reunification, similar to the Syrian humanitarian admissions programme introduced for a limited time in 2014 and would also allow members of Irish society to co-sponsor family reunification applications providing financial, social and institutional backing and thus improving a person's opportunity for integration, easing the financial burden on the host family in Ireland and on the government. This is a pragmatic, cost-effective and efficient solution that ensures safety of those seeking protection while also promoting integration and uniting families. Many people already legally resident in Ireland are desperately seeking to bring family members out of conflict zones and have adequate resources to support them and the International Time Protection Senator. Act sort of makes that uh, difficult. Finally, Minister, I know from first-hand experience as an economic migrant how programmes and strategies can make migration a win-win for people like me and our families and the countries we find and found ourselves in. And I would thank the Minister for listening and the time he's given to this important issue. Thank you. Uh, Senator Ronan Mullen.